for many of us, it seems like we're always having a battle with our weight. You know, we lose the pounds, they come back on. How do we find that space of balance where we're feeling great, looking good, and at that ideal weight that makes us feel fantastic and alive? And I know this is true whether you're a man or a woman, this battle with the bulge can seem like it goes on and on and on. Well, my guest today is an expert in exactly this area and so much more. Her name is Nicole Ross, and she's joining us to talk about how we can finally make peace with this whole challenge that seems to just keep going in our lives. Mm -hmm. Welcome, Nicole. Thank you. Thank you. It's great to be here. So what... What is going on? I mean, I know that weight loss, it just seems like, you know, New Year's is right around the corner and we have that resolution. And most people around the globe, one of those top resolutions is I'm going to lose weight this year. Right. So, so many people, I mean, struggle and try so many different diets over and over again. And they lose 10 pounds and then they gain 15 pounds back. And it's just this cycle that we're all going through or people that have struggled for a while. And really, they're not addressing the deeper issues of why is it that they're really eating that food? What are they going for? What are they looking for? How are they nourishing themselves? And the food is not going to get it. So they're, they're trying to nourish this empty hole just with that quick bite of something. And what they need is to actually look inside, look a little bit deeper, and think about what it is that really is nourishing them. Are they taking any time out? Are they doing things that they love to do in their lives? Um, you know, there's uh, this whole emotional metabolism that we're trying to address, and that is a route to the long-term weight loss. I love that word, emotional metabolism. I, I think that when it comes to weight loss, for many people, it's like, well, should I put this in my mouth? Should I eat this today? We're looking at labels, we're counting calories. And what I hear you saying is that it may be more than that. Oh yeah, we're raising that consciousness. I mean, what I'm trying to get my clients to do is to look at what it is that they're really hungry for. Are they hungry for that piece of chocolate? Why do they want that? If they are, then have it, eat that piece of chocolate, but at least they're taking that 10 seconds and checking it in, checking in with themselves and saying, is that what I want or is it something else? Do I want to take a hot bath? Do I want to listen to some music? Do I want to actually feed my soul in a different way? And that's where you make the big shift. And when you can make that shift, it leads to long-term weight loss. Tell me a little bit about your personal story. So I grew up in a very culturally Italian family <laughs> where food equaled love. Um, you know, everything was filled with food. Here you go. Are you hungry? Was well, on you. Yeah. I want to talk about this. Have a noodle, you know. <laughs> Have a meatball. And it's cultural and it definitely is, you know, a strong force where they always want to be cooking. We're sitting down, we're having lunch, and we're talking about what we're going to have for dinner. Um, who makes the best mozzarella? Who makes the best bread? It's. So I'm one of four girls and we all struggled, struggled forever with our weight because that was how we trained ourselves. That's what, what our emotional way of being was to eat. Well, we're going to be loved if we eat. If I eat more, I'm going to be really loved. So at one point I was you know, pushing past 200 pounds and really it was at the time when I was probably around 21 years old and individualizing, you know, going off on my own and separated from the family and checked in and I thought, what is it that I'm lacking? What, what is it that I really want? And just started going on that journey of how to feed myself in a completely different way. How to get that love that I needed for myself, my own self-love. Um, and I dropped about 100 pounds and have been able to keep it off. Wow, mm -hmm. that's amazing. Mm -hmm. I, I, it's interesting because I have heard this story before, you know, people who eat because they're going through stress in their lives or they have a lot of challenges with, you know, an emotional transition. How big of a role do you believe that is in being able to make that shift with your weight once and for all? I think that's the key. That's mm -hmm. the crux. There was a research that somebody did that they had 
some people that were doing this one hour of exercise and on the same food program, and then another one where they did one hour of therapy and the same food <laughs> program. Well, two years later, the people that did the one hour of therapy actually kept their weight off. Oh. The people that did the, two, the one hour of exercise gained it back plus more. So you're saying that we need to go to therapy to lose weight? <laughs> <laughs> I am saying that because they got to talk about what was coming up for them emotionally, right. that they were able to retrain their thinking and get deeper into a way of being with themselves and really step into that discomfort. What is it that's coming up for you when you're not able to have food to numb it? Mm -hmm. So they got to talk about it, and they got to work through it, and the first step was to step into that discomfort. When you don't have that tool that's usually there where it's so easy and accessible to reach for a piece of pizza, <laughs> instead you actually are going to take time out and look at yourself and think about what is it that I actually do want. That's challenging. So I am there to support people on their journey in that way. So I know that you have a program that um, helps people lose weight and, and you know really shed the pounds, mm -hmm. so to speak. Mm -hmm. So what is that first step? So the first step is to stop. To stop and really look at what you're doing. S stop filling that gap with the food and the um, choices that you're making right now. And I give them a... a diet plan to go on so that they see the immediate results and they step into the discomfort very quickly. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, th I think it's hard because when you have stress in your life, you know, it's like, oh, I'm just going to grab that chocolate bar. I'm going to grab that. I'm going to order a pizza. <laughs> I'm mm -hmm. getting takeout Chinese because I'm, I'm taking care of myself. Mm -hmm. You know, we have That's... that mindset. Um, but in, in, in truth, it, it's not. It's not as supportive. Um, to live your life from that that impulse reaction. Right, because after you do that, you tend to beat yourself up of, why did I do that? Why did I do that? <laughs> do you ever beat yourself up when you take a hot bath? No. 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 You don't do that. You... I think a lot of us feel like we're even too busy to take a hot bath. Like, I, I know I have this great bathtub at my house. <laughs> you know, I used to take hot baths all the time, and then all of a sudden it's like, wow, I haven't been in there in a couple of months. And what are you waiting for? I don't know. Yeah. I just think that we just, we get busy and we, we forget about ourselves. We do. It's very true. So I'm giving you the opportunity to click into yourself. I work with people for nine weeks and they see rapid results with the program that I give them. And in the meanwhile, they also talk to me mm -hmm. weekly on a weekly basis. And we talk about what's coming up for them. And I give them tools to use to actually nourish themselves nourish their souls where they really need to be nourished. So it sounds like part of this comes in that choice point. When we're feeling stressed, we want to grab for a piece of pizza, or we maybe have a different choice. Mm -hmm. So let's go back to my program where the next step in SHED is heal. And that is really resetting your metabolism. So I'm working with people, they've done diet after diet where they've lost weight, and then they gain the weight, and their metabolism is just shot. I mean, in every way. They are emotionally drained. They are frustrated with having to do another program. So I work with them in talking and also reestablishing your, meta your metabolic point, set point. Um, so we are creating a new set point. So your meta metabolism usually has this number that it goes to. And you go up five pounds, down five pounds, but you're always kind of hovering around the same level. And with my program, we bring it down to your lowest weight in 40 days, which we can get to. You can do the, the program several times. And after that 40 days is up, then we have a new set point. We click it in. We click that set point in and you're also in a different place emotionally. So your emotional metabolism and your actual physical metabolism is now running more efficiently. And you can eat and drink whatever you want. I mean, you're going to make healthier choices because you want to feed yourself in actually a way that is nutritional and um, you're getting a lot out of it. So when you say heal your metabolism, how do you do this specifically? 
So I use a homeopathic HCG, which is human chorionic gondotropin. And it's a hormone that your body makes when you're pregnant. And what it does is, that the homeopathic form of it is just, it creates the energy as if it were the real human chorionic gondotropin. Um, and it tells your hypothalamus gland to use a stored fat that you have as energy. So I make people, um, I don't make them do anything, <laughs> <laughs> but I put them on a really structured plan where they start to shed the pounds. They lose about, you can lose up to two pounds a day, and men, of course, lose it much faster than Why does women. It work it's that so way? unfair. <laughs> but um, you lose about a pound a day, averages after the full period about 0.5 to 1 a day, and then we set your metabolism at a different set point. So how does this work for men? So if you're tricking the body into thinking that it's pregnant, how does that work for a man? Well, they actually do use HCG for men to reestablish their um, testosterone sometimes when weightlifters, if they've done a lot of steroids, but it does work really effectively for men just as well as women. And it's, your hypothalamus gland is just using your stored fat. So mm -hmm. if you're a man or woman, it doesn't matter, we all have stored fat. Um, and it's using that as the additional calories. So you're burning up to 2,000 calories a day, but you're not taking that in. Wow. And then afterwards, we get you back up. The maintenance part, the diet is actually kind of easy. Um, after your first you know, three days where you're getting your sea legs on, you're not really talking about the diet anymore. More you're talking about what's coming up on a daily basis. And of, getting over the psychology of, oh my gosh, I'm not going to be able to eat this certain yeah, thing Yeah, I smack you right into that discomfort zone <laughs> very quickly. That's why this program is so great because you do hit that discomfort really fast and really, really easily of saying, oh gosh, it's not there anymore because it's just been taken away. So that's when you start seeing it come, come up. And at the same time, you're getting these results of, oh, you're getting on the scale, so you want to keep on going to shed more weight each day. You want to be precise with the program because you're getting these great results. And after a while, it gets pretty easy. It's, you know, you do it quickly. And then um, the next step in it is enlighten. So enlighten is, you know, I, I give you tools where you write a vision sheet or I light a candle, create beautiful settings for yourself with a nice warm bath and some smelling salts and um, essential oils, um, all different tools that I work with you and give you to replace those places that you're feeling like you're missing something, where normally it would be food that would be numbing you. I know that's such a big part of it. I remember, you know, after I've had three children myself, and so I lost about 50 pounds after my third child. You know, mm -hmm. it kind of creeps up on you. It's easy to lose it after the first one. The second one's a little harder. By the third one, you're like, people are asking if you're still pregnant, you know? And so, I mean, <laughs> so many of us are plagued with that, right. of, go, of saying, oh my gosh, what happened? My metabolism isn't running like it used to be, and I can't lose weight like I did when I was 18. So this is a great program for them. Right. And the big thing for me, too, was having that, that vision. You know, I had on my mirror, you know, like a post-it of exactly, you know, how much I wanted to weigh, just to that mm -hmm. number. And at the time, I put it up there, I thought, whew, this is unrealistic. But, you know, within nine weeks, I was able to reach this goal. You know, I, I have used HCG myself before, and mm -hmm. it does have amazing results. And I think that, um, you know, I love what you're talking about, and this is why I invited you to be on the show, because it is not just the diet. There's so much more to it. I mean, mm -hmm. what other things do you, you know, advise people to do? You know, we're talking about taking a bath, but, you know, there's still, it's like all these different layers. So I do advise you to do things like taking walks. It's a great exercise because you don't really exercise rigorously during this program. Mm -hmm. um, if you take a walk, it connects your mind, body, you're in nature, you're feeling good, you're breathing fresh air. Um, yoga is another great form of exercise. It's really the all over, all inclusive, your body is one. Um, just clicking into those different ways of being with yourself and ways of, of being you know, with food and, or not with food. Um, Guided meditation is another great tool. So powerful. Um, you know, the spiritual aspect to it is just 
phenomenal. If you can, if you're interested in that, that is one route that you can take. You can take a different route that's just a little, much more, you know, nuts and bolts, and it works as well. But the spiritual aspect is great. So a guided meditation, a warm bath, lighting candles, putting on wonderful music, doing things that feed you, you know, really soothing, loving, kind. Be kind to yourself. We're so hard on ourselves. Right. Um, we beat ourselves up over, you know, everything. It's just crazy. I know when I lost all of my weight, a lot of it had to do with the fact that I was meditating, that I was writing affirmations. Mm -hmm. You know, even though I had a lot of children in the house, you know, I got up early at 5.30 in the morning. I took the time to go through my process. So it wasn't just, you know, right. do I eat this piece of bread or do I eat the salad? It wasn't just those choices. You're it setting was your this day whole up. picture. Yeah. yeah, I give you affirmations and you're just setting up your entire day of, you feel good. You wake right. up and well, first thing you do is you take your drops and you get on the scale and you probably lost weight. And then you started off with an affirmation or a guided meditation. You're setting yourself up to feel good. You're feeding yourself right first thing in the morning, right away. What do you believe, I mean, you're an expert in this area, about the role of weight gain and just stress and emotions? Well, I think that we are all putting ourselves last and we're saying, um, we don't have time, we'll look at that later, we'll look at that later, we'll look at that later. I mean, America, one third of Americans is obese. and. Obviously, we're out of line. I mean, we're not choosing the right foods because we want convenience, we want fast, we want quick and easy. And with that becomes, becomes all the processed foods and um, you know, we're just packing on the pounds and we're not actually taking the time to make a conscious choice because we're making a convenient choice. Right. A convenient choice is not a conscious choice. You, you know, I see people and they just are eating in their car. They don't even know. Their brain doesn't even know that they've eaten. So yeah. sit down and be mindful and really enjoy your food. Feel it and like know that you're chewing something that's really healthy and delicious and, and nourishing. I will share with you a story. I remember a time when I, my children were really little and we were rushing. You know, we were off to a doctor's appointment. And so we, we drove through the drive through which because I knew they would eat French fries. So I paid the money at the drive-thru, and then I just drove off without the food. <laughs> so I had to circle back around to come back around and, you know, pick up my food. But at that time, it was so automatic. I was just going through the paces, you know, just to get them the French fry or the milkshake, you right. know, in the back seat so they would be, you know, quiet and not be agitated. And I, I think it's such an important point that you're talking about that we, we do. We just don't always make that connection between what I'm putting in my body to nourish myself and, you know, what the impact of it is. And so many of my clients talk about, you know, I'm, I'm at home, I've worked all day and I just want to grab something quick um, or I, one of my problems, I sit in front of the television and I just snack and they don't even know how many calories they've just right. consumed. And then they beat themselves up afterwards and that's when they start beating up on their emotional metabolism. That's the emotional metabolism part. I always try to tell people, accept yourself right where you are first. Mm -hmm. Love yourself right where you are first because this body has gotten you this far. Right. And then we'll move forward. Yeah, I know, I know for myself that when I'm doing exercise programs or any type of weight loss, you know, if I'm having a good day, that's fantastic. But then there's also always those days that just are not as good as the good day. <laughs> and, and so I just okay. start over the next day. And that has always allowed me to get to where I wanted to be, just having that um, compassion mm -hmm. for myself. Being gentle, right. be gentle, care for yourself. Right. Because you're the one that's going to do it. Not many other people are going to do that for you. And if you don't show that you care, nobody else is going to care. So Nicole, where can uh, our viewers find you and work with you? So you can find me at NicoleRoss.net and um, or you can email me at NicoleRoss.net Oh, sorry. It doesn't matter. Yeah. <laughs> Nicole at NicoleRoss.net. And I'd be happy to work with all of you. So um, if somebody was watching, and well, I hope somebody, not if somebody's watching, we'll cut all that. Uh -huh. <laughs> um, so if you're ready to get started in the new year. <laughs> so, okay, hold on. I'm just going to compose myself. Um, <laughs> You guys are doing great. Um, you want to just do it the camera one. 
uh, right, I will do it to camera one. Right. I'll do it to camera one. Okay, all right. Um, new Year is always three, two, one. You know, the New Year is always a great time to start that plan, that uh, resolution, so to speak. But you know, it's it sounds like it's about more than just a resolution. It sounds like it's really a lifestyle shift. Yeah, you definitely will make a shift. Um, and actually, New Year's is a great time. I think it's a time when people are looking to change things up, and it's like this emotional shift that they're having in their brains, and it's just this, the, the beginning of the new year, and I think a lot of people sit there and go, okay, I'm ready for something different. The holidays are not a good time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, a lot more temptation. Yeah, yeah, a lot more temptation. So you would set yourself up to be successful at the new year. Absolutely. Nicole Ross, thank you so much for being here thank on you. The Ripple Effect. Thank you. And uh, great points and a lot of wisdom. So thank you. Thank you, Kristen.